In the previous lecture, I talked about jury stable test, uh, and we technically constructed the uh, jury stability conditions for first order, second order, and third order systems. Now I will talk about, uh, for a general uh, dynamic system, how we can construct the jury table and how we can apply stability test. Okay, so the first row of the jury table is composed of the coefficients of the denominator, but in a flipped order. Instead of from 0 to n, we start from n to 0 and m minus 1, m minus 2, as you can see, 0. So in the second row, we flip the coefficients again. Now we uh, start using the original order from 0 to m. Okay, so third row and fourth row will be the comp uh, coefficients of b's, like from b0 to b, n minus 1. Uh, and we will compute the uh, coefficients of b's, uh, technically from the coefficient from a0 to a. Yeah. Okay, so as you can see, we have a similar pattern. So 3 starts from b n minus 1 to go to b 0, and 4th row starts from 0 to n minus 1. Okay. So uh, similarly, uh, we will use the coefficients of b's to compute c's from c 0 to c n minus 2. Uh, two. So 5th row, which is the odd row, will, be, uh, will start from c n minus 2 to go to c 0, and 6th row will start from 0 to n minus 1. We will continue this until we have 3 coefficients left in the jury table. Uh, which is technically the row number 2n minus 3. Okay, so technically co uh, computation is not that hard. You will see that. Okay, so these are the formulas to compute bk, ck, qk. Okay, so k is 0 to n minus 1 uh, for b, k is uh, an index from 0 to n minus 2 for c, and it goes like that. Okay, so uh, before, instead of looking at the, the formula that is, which is exactly true, I will show you how you can compute this using the table. Okay, so let's start B0. Okay, the goal is computing B0. Okay, what are we going to do is, so let's take the first column. Okay, in computing the jury stable test, as you can see, we always pick the first column, A and A0, BA minus 1, B0, P3, P0. Okay, so always pick the first column. Okay, so we need to compute the determinant of a matrix, and for B0, we pick the second column next to the first column, okay? And these two columns form a, technically a matrix, okay? So B0 is equal to A n, A n minus 1, A0, A1, determinant of this 2 by 2 matrix, okay? And determinant computation is uh, fairly easy. Uh, we can compute B0 uh, without any problem. Okay, that's good. And if you uh, look at the details of K, technically you will see that this is exactly true. Okay, let's clean the second column. Now our goal is computing B, N minus, no, B1. Okay, so what are we going to do is, it's very simple. We will stick up the column that we used in the previous computation. We will go to third row, third column, okay. And now we will form a new matrix and compute its determinant, A N, A0. A n minus 2, A2, it's the B2. Similarly, B, no, it's B1, B2 is equal to A n, A0, A n minus 3. Okay, and this is, should be A3, I guess. Okay, exactly. It goes like that. Okay, so once you computed uh, all of the Bs, uh, you can fill the table and then go on to C. The idea of computing C is exactly the same. Let's do one example and see the, the details. Okay, let's assume that we computed these. Okay, so the goal is computing C0. Okay, and C0. So pick the first column of the B uh, rows. Pick the second column because C0 is the first coefficient and C0 is equal to simply E n minus 1. B n minus 2, B0, B1 determinant. And uh, we can do the same thing for C1, C2, C3. We can go to D and uh, until we have only three uh, elements left in the jury table, we can finish the jury table. Okay, so the second question is how we can check the stability using these coefficients. Okay, so let's clean everything. Assuming that we finish the jury table, these are the uh, stability conditions. The discrete dynamical system stable if and only if all of these conditions are satisfied. Okay, first of all, a n, the magnitude of a n, should be less than 
a0. Uh, we assume that without of loss or generality, a0 is greater than 0. d1 should be greater than 0. Minus 1 to the power n, d minus should be greater than 0. We technically uh, derived these conditions in the previous uh, cases, like second order and third order case. So the main difference here is we have one minus 1 to the power n in this uh, condition. Okay. So as you can see, in order to compute that, you don't need to compute the jury table. The jury table. You can just test this. And if your system is not stable, you can just stop here. You don't need to compute all of the details. Since you just told this a little bit computational messy, I really recommend you to do steps one by one, test if your system is stable or not, and move on with the next steps. And we will show an example similar to that. Okay, that's good. So once you are done with all of the conditions, let's say this is checked, this is this check, what you do is you check the magnitude of Bn minus one is larger than magnitude of B0. Okay, so technically, last coefficient of b and b, magnitude of last coefficient of b should be larger than magnitude of the first coefficient of b. Okay, so we will do the same thing for b, c, until q. Okay, so uh, when computing the stability conditions, we are, will only use the uh, coefficients at the end and at the start for uh, b, c, until uh, q, or whatever we got. Okay, this is the basic idea, and as you can see, even if a little bit more computational messy, the algorithm, the basic structure is not that complicated. Okay, good. Let's say let's clean that. And let's solve an example. Okay, we already constructed for uh, first order, second order, third order. Now uh, let's check a uh, fourth order system. Okay, that's good. So what are we need to do is, so this is the g of c, it's a transfer function, it's the closed transfer function, and we need to define if it's stable or not, okay? So we look at first the denominator, okay? We write d of c in this form, okay? So a0 is equal to one, a1 is equal to minus three, a2 is equal to four, a3 is equal to minus two, and a4 is equal to 0 0.5, okay, that's good. So what are we going to do is, let's check the condition that only depends on A and original denominator, okay? So let's remember our conditions. Okay, so A n, which is A4, okay, so what's A4? 0 0.5, okay, is it less than A0, A0 is equal to one, as you can see, this is true, okay. First condition is check. We can move on with the next condition. Let's compute D1, okay? Or we can say that uh, this in order to be more clear. So we compute D of C where Z is equal to one. And if I compute it, what I found is 0 0.5. You can check that, which is larger than zero. That's check, okay, which is good or bad. I don't know, it depends. So the next condition, d of z, where z is going to minus 1, if I compute that, it is 10.5. Okay, so uh, this is 10.5, okay? So what is n? n is an odd number, okay? So this part is 10.5, this is larger than 0, this is check. So for uh, stability, we uh, satisfy first three conditions which only depend d of c and coefficients of a. So what we need to do is just construct the Julia table and uh, try to compute remaining coefficients. Okay, that's good. Okay, these are a's, okay. Uh, we need to place a0, a1, a2, a3, a4 here, and similarly a4, a3, a2, a1, a0 here. Let's do that, okay, that's good. So what we need to do is we need to compute b's. Okay, so first of all, we don't need to compute all of the b's at this time. So because the stability condition only depends on b0, bn minus one, which is technically three, okay? So it's enough to compute b0 and b3. Okay, so what is b0? I need to use the first column and second column, construct a matrix, and compute its determinant. So B0 is equal to 0 0.5 minus 2, 1 minus 3. If I compute the determinant, it will be equal to 0 0.5. That's good. Okay, and I need to compute B3. 
So B2 and B1, I can do that, but maybe the system is unstable where I need to compute all of the coefficients at this point, right? So how I compute B3, which is e also easy. Since B3 is the last coefficient, I need to pick the last column, which is technically the flipped version of the first column, which is 0 0.5, 1, 1, 0 0.5. It is equal to minus 0 0.75. OK, so what is magnitude of B0? It's equal to 0 0.5. What is magnitude of B3? It is 0 0.75. This is greater than 0 0.5. That's checked, which means that we are still in the uh, stable condition. So it's not; it may not be stable, but at least we didn't uh, disprove that it is stable. Okay. So what I we need to do is we need to compute B two, B one. Okay. Uh, finish B's and move on to C's. Okay. So if we compute the B's using the formulas, it is as you can see like this. Okay. So we have one, two, three, four. So only row that we need to compute left is C two, C one, C zero. And only condition that is really left is if uh, CM minus 2, which is technically, uh, okay, this is slightly, okay, this is 2, that's correct. If C2, magnitude of C2 is larger than C0, and as you can see, you don't need to compute C1 anyway. Okay, so that's good. So what we need to do is let's compute C0. Okay, in order to compute C0, pick the first column, okay, pick the second column, okay. 0 0.75 to 0 0.5 minus 2. Okay, let's check. This is equal to minus 2. That's great. Okay, so let's clean that. So why we need to do is compute C2. Okay, that's good. In order to do that, we need to go to the last column. Okay, last column. Let's go that. Okay, so I need to use this. I need this. So C2 is equal to minus 0 0.75, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, minus 0 0.75. The determinant is equal to what? It's approximately equal to 0 0.312. Okay, that's it. So let's check magnitude of C2. C2, if it is higher than C0. Okay, so what is C2? It is like... 0 0.3, what is Z0? Z it is approximately equal to 2. No, C0 is okay. So I think I completed wrong. Sorry for that. Okay, and you can check that. So C0 seems to be equal to 0 0.5. Okay. Okay, yes, exactly. 0 0.5, no problem. Let's change it. So C0 is equal to 0 0.5. C2 is equal to 0 0.3 approximately. Okay, is C3 larger than 0 0.5? Unfortunately, it's not, which means that we failed in jurisdiction test and the system is indeed unstable. Okay, that's it. So as you can see, if there is no parametric variable inside the jury table, even for higher order systems, applying jurisdiction test is still fairly easy. Okay. But of course, since uh, we are doing an open material exam, in the MATLAB or OCTAV, you can simply look at the roots of the system, okay, computationally. If you can look at if they are all inside the unit circle and you can decide uh, on the stability anyway, so it's not that hard. The importance of your stability is similar to the root of that will come into play when we have a, a symbolic variable, such as like a, a gain, and we, if we try to find the region of stability based on a single or a couple of different uh, independent parameters. Okay, so next time I will talk about another test, which depends on binary transformation of the turbids, and we will finish the stability from this perspective.